The good news about both teams in this game having lost earlier today is someone has to end their day with a win. The bad news is the other team will end their play day having won, run the treadmill and gone basically nowhere. Our last game of the day, a reschedule from play day one, will see DZ and LG go off and one of them will go 0 for 2 on the day. That's kind of the only stake you really need to worry about. Points be damned, where you fit in the standings be damned. If you lose two games on the day, in one day, that is probably the worst feeling you can have, especially in a best of one scenario. Yeah, it's definitely not a tough, I mean, it's not a great situation to be in by any means, especially you're coming up on almost playing half of your games. You need these wins nonetheless. But what's what, another important thing to take from this though, coming from an LG standpoint, being able to play back-to-back -back games like this does set you up for success in some regard, because when you get to LAN, you might have to be playing games back-to-back. -back. You're gonna have to be doing these games one right after the other. So it's yeah. a matter, it gives you that little bit of testament and gives you a little bit of that experience because they don't have that LAN experience. So it could be a good start for LG. And for me, I mean, this is just a Dark Zero proving ground game. Like, if you are losing this game, your second match of the day up against Luminosity, I'm starting to bring you alarm bells. We, start, we said at the very start of the day that for DZ, whilst their start wasn't what they wanted, it's not the end of the world because we're early into the groups. We still got playoffs to deal with. Now we're not so early into the groups anymore. DZ played two today. They lose both of them. They're all of a sudden in a horrible spot for the standings. Both of them at this point, to your exact mention, have played half of their stage already at this point. This is their fifth game. Again, LG might have had a good streak going for a little bit, but Dark Zero have never had a streak. They got that one win. It was an overtime dub, so even they have struggled for all the points they've Got. And currently, DZ, for their own part, sit in eighth place in the standings. As of right now, they could jump up as high as maybe fifth or sixth, but it's going to take a long, hard slog against LG today to get there. Yeah, I mean, looking at the roster entirely, I really, really want to be seeing NJR really step up into where we see him in that spotlight because we haven't really been seeing him in that spotlight all through this stage. And we need to be seeing that from him because he is such a pivotal piece for DZ and not having that, I think, is truly affecting them. Yeah, and I mean, for NJR, like, historically, he's been so consistent. This is the first time that we've ever seen him really go negative through a stage of the NAL. He had one stage, like, three years ago on Disrupt Gaming where he went minus two overall. This stage, he's been, I don't know, minus 11 at the start of the day, I want to say. So he's been really, really struggling so far for Dark Zero. For me, it just feels like he's he's getting caught out of position a lot. It feels like, whereas usually he's able to kind of predict where people are going to be, and he's always ready for what the push is going to be, especially on defense. There have been so many times throughout this stage so far where NGR just looks kind of lost. Like, he doesn't have the full picture. I don't know if that's him getting a little bit lost, or if that's maybe his teammates not calming him properly. I don't know what it is, but this is not the NGR I'm used to seeing, and I don't like it. Which is a problem because you want the guy who was the top-rated player from the Invitational to sort of keep that streak going. Citizen maybe has done that as number number three going to a matey, and there's some success brewing with that, that a matey squad, but it's not been the same for guys like NJ. And it's we don't want to unfairly put the guy under a microscope, but when you're that good for such a long stretch and then have a stage like this, it's a notable thing we should talk about for sure. Yeah, and so, I mean, there's, there's other people to, to, to step it up to. For Dark Zero, it's definitely a team issue. You don't get this far down as Dark Zero have from one person. But yeah, I mean, something to work on. No, everyone on the team really does have to excel. I only emphasize NJR because he has been a huge performer for DZ and his yeah. name that you constantly heard about. But yeah, it does come down to everyone else, whether that's Troy making different calls, making different adaptations. I mean, we've seen, like I said, what I want to see from DZ is just being a little more jumping around, not being so structured. I think we they'd see a little more success to some degree. Their loss was in game two against M80 on Skyscraper. Luminosity's loss was to OXG, and just about an hour later, 5-7 on Clubhouse. And there were more redeemable qualities about that DZ game than the LG one, because I think, again, it can be argued, a lot of the rounds they got at the end, that was a comeback that really didn't have many legs under it. I mean, yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll say that. I mean, I thought it was going to be a 7-1. It was going to be swift. That was going to be it. I mean, it looks like you wouldn't be blamed for thinking that. Absolutely. And but that's also to credit LG. They didn't they didn't give up. They kept fighting, even if they were at the back foot. And that is important for a brand new team that you can be down that hard and yeah. make that comeback like that shows a lot of tenacity, just a lot of resilience in that case. But still, to, to, to learn from that game, a lot of those mistakes, I wouldn't even say they were, they were mistakes. OXG was just playing extremely 
well and playing a really good game of Siege. We had a graphic that we wanted prepped because we thought maybe Hat would have a really good performance in, in the game that he just played to compare it against his performance against M80 on Skyscraper. But regrettably, that's not going to look nearly as good now because for as much as we want to highlight the reasons why he won in that M80 game, it, it was just a really slow slide for him in that OXG matchup. Yeah, I mean, Hat is the guy who got them their big upset, right? The story for LG last week was they beat M80, one of the top teams in North America right now, and he had a fantastic performance to do that. 16 and 7, 181 EPS. He was absent in their first game of the day. 50% cost. Half of the rounds, he's having zero impact. And then the other half, I mean, yeah, he's getting kills here and there, but he just wasn't an impactful player. One of these rounds, he's lighting his teammates on fire when they're trying to go for the plants. And yeah, they won that round, but I'm still looking at this guy as a player who, uh, has so much potential, who mechanically is an insanely talented guy, but also just isn't hitting that consistently enough. So for me, if they're gonna beat Dark Zero, if they're gonna finally come back, get a win on the day, he's gotta be another one to step up because he's the one who did it against M80. And for his team, they are attacking first. The map for game five is Chalet. Thoughts? Well, this is DZ is one of their favorite maps. They they love this map. It's a map that really does heavily play into their style of Siege specifically. It's very constrictive in certain sites on the defense and that you can pressure from the attack side. But it goes into that if DZ can actually find their footing on attacks because they weren't finding their footing on attacks versus M80, which is why they fell short. Yeah, Chalet, probably one of Dark Zero's best maps at the Six Invitational. A 7-5 loss to G2 and then a 7-5 win over Virtus Pro. Two top four teams to go 12 rounds against both of them is very impressive. The problem is because of how DZ's been struggling so much, is Foxy going with DZ the second time on the day because he went with DZ even though M80 beat them on Skyscraper earlier in the day. Is that prediction a sure thing? Is picking the team that's historically been better with the bigger names on it the wise pick here? Guys, now's your chance to go with the underdog if you want. You know what? It's the last game of the day. LG have shown a lot of tenacity and resilience. I'm just going to say LG. Even if this is DZ's wow. best map, I'm going to say LG. That's uh, that's talk of a guy who's out of the running for that belt. Over there. <laughs> he's only, he's only six percent behind you, though. He's not that I'm far gonna, behind. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say LG. Just just you know. Okay. To, to, to be clear, he's saying LG even though the graphic says Dark Zero in this case. Yeah. Just to clarify. Okay. There, okay. We there we go. Hey, good stuff. And you're sticking with DZ? Yeah, I think Dark Zero is a strong map for them. Uh, it's not out of the question for this to be an upset. This is definitely a possibly winnable game for LG. They could do it but I think Dark Zero are the better squad. I think they'll win this one. All right, well, this is the opportunity that Laxing has been waiting for to jump up the standings a little bit or to catch to to up with his compatriots even or just it. keep sinking even lower. We'll find out as game five rolls on, and I have no idea how this one's about to go. Parker and Pengu with the call. I would have put really good money on DZ winning this matchup, but then I saw DZ play today, and now I don't think that's really the case anymore. Then I saw LG play today, and oh, I don't no. know if that's really the case anymore either. So I'm kind of with Jacob on this one. I have no idea what's going to happen. But my speculation is that this is going to be a close match, Nick. You say that, like, you know, it's for all the wrong reasons. And I'm kind of with you there, where if both teams have a weak performance, yeah, we can go overtime for all we want. But do we really want to see an overtime game that is like a sloppy one? I don't know. I want to see him to clean siege. We, we really have not seen a lot of, of overtime, period, in Rainbow Six so far this stage. And here in the North America League, we haven't seen a lot of it either. There's been the odd game here or there, but yeah. it's been relatively clean-cut victories for these teams. We'll go to Chalet for the very first time today to cap off our play day. And, well, Immunity seems to think the Dark Zero has it in the bag. There's a... Uh, I think the community might have this one right in terms of who has the most potential to win. I think DZ yeah. has the greater upside. But again, both of the matches today were quite ugly. DZ had some very poor rounds against M80. LG had some exceptionally poor rounds against OXG. So it's, I believe the official term is crapshoot. This is a crapshoot, Nick. It's a crapshoot, okay. Well, both teams had a small break, of course, before heading into this, so... I would really hope that this is like a big reset point, you know, approach this with a new set of eyes, all the game that happened earlier today. And they also played the map, like we're going to Chalet. So I think already that is a positive side for both teams because when you have played a map earlier and your opponent kind of sat there and prepped for it, watched the back, you know, in the, in the meantime, you don't want to go straight back to it. You've already struggled. There's some bad voodoo. There's some bad emotions attached to it. Go somewhere else. Now, Chalet, 
is a map where I think, again, I think both teams can do well here. Yeah, okay, DC is expected to win, but I, I think Jesse is right in the sense that there could be a potential upset. I do think, however, it comes down to whether or not a player like Hat is going to show up, where he finds those kills, where he actually has like a pop-off game, because what DC is good at is playing a disciplined, more like laid-back, slow, methodical playstyle, and if attackers are not aggressive into that, you're not going to advance anywhere in the map. So, when you see LG come out swinging, and I mean, they're attacker repicking right now. They might change it. There's still 20 seconds left, but this is definitely, if they stick this lineup, coming out swinging. The glass, the sense, the capital on a dining execute. It's one of those things that can be over in like 60 seconds from when they spawn into the server. It's a Canadian on Capcan. Of course, you go too quick, and those EDs are at the door. You can't get injured or outright killed immediately. But that's just one small thing you gotta do to check before, of course, running through that door. There's a couple things here that I wanted to touch upon. Uh, when you look okay. at Luminosity, maybe Luminosity will take some umbrage with the statement I'm about to make, but I mean, Hat Ooh. is to me their largest offensive threat. If he's not showing up, then Luminosity will have some difficulties in the killing department. The other thing I want to touch upon is the Soulless ban. I don't necessarily think Canadian was very effective on Soulless in the first match that DZ played today. Yet you take the Soulless out of the equation. Obviously, on a map like Chalet, where a lot of these floors can be shot through, Soulless is going to have immense value, and we'll see these objectives coming, and we'll see the plant coming. Dark Zero will now need to make some small changes because they won't have that intel at their disposal. All as I was saying this, by the way, LG getting a very good look at the bomb site as they are effectively in it in the first 45 <laughs> seconds of the round. DZ have but a single uh, player to hold against the tides, and that's NJR. Just not far removed from the bomb chassis, prone on the ground with an ACOG in hand. That's awkward. Like, they rushed Trophy. They didn't rush the bomb site. They rushed room next to it. Now they're stalling out. DC, again, they understand the mission. They're playing four people vertically, one person on the side, and that single person has killed the glass. That's the win con. That's what the entire strat was built around. The smokes to enable the glass, to get some kills, to get a plant. Now they gotta pivot. They gotta go out and figure it out, but they don't. NGR finds a second kill in this round. He is locking down the side, being an anchor player. Actually quite impressive that Dark Zero is pulling this off without a warden on the board, and I mean, I think yep. that... Kind of goes into the fact that Luminosity took advantage of that. See that there's nobody to really counter you. There's no bulletproof cams. If there's no evil eye cams that you need to worry about, then sure, run your smokes. But there are two bulletproof cams on the side of Dark Zero, and maybe those are partially responsible for the drubbing that DZ is giving Luminosity, at least to start this round. The round will be over within the minute, but Luminosity's got some kills to find if they want to come out on the right side of it. Silent and Wi Fi are the only remaining players from LG. NJR pays for his crimes inside of dining. Gets killed. Luminosity still basically have full control of this bomb site. We've been so focused on what's going on in the bomb site that we haven't even seen the other four players from DZ who are spread out all over the matchup. Silent with yet another kill. Numbers will close to equal, but still favor DZ. Wi-Fi will walk that diffuser, and there's been plenty of time to get the case down. I don't know if they're just worried about intel or what. Oh. There's a long angle from Nafe to eliminate Wi-Fi diffuser picked up by Silent, but there's almost no chance that a flashing red HP Ash is going to be able to get that diffuser down without somebody from DZ seeing it. Nafe spots the last two players from LG, and he gives DZ a much-needed win. I'm curious what exactly happened from LG, if it was, they didn't fully understand the side setup, maybe they expected Dark Zero to defend it differently. Because again, like they rushed in super decisively into Trophy and then they stood still. And then nothing happened. I'm sure Glass dying early on, of course, that made them, you know, be forced into like going on to a different attacking approach. But still, before when Glass was alive, they didn't really progress anywhere. Either way, they try and set the pace, they try and take control of the round, it does not work against DC in that particular case. Now, if that quote-unquote rush had worked, that would be a massively, like, highly successful round for the attacking side because it forces DC to kind of change their game approach. If you get rushed against in a very early, like, couple of rounds, first, second, third, you're not going to be afraid of extending too much. For example, right now, DC are playing bar. 
They're gonna play library, they're gonna play Master Bedroom Office, they're gonna try and spread themselves as thin as possible and control as much of the map as possible in the beginning of the round. Look at the lineups. Dave and Bolo towards kitchen, Pampers up inside of Office Master Bedroom. It makes sense. Had LG rushed last round and won, like let's say flawlessly for example, they probably wouldn't dare to extend like that in fear of another bombsite rush. So small things like that can play a factor into the mentality of like how teams they will play defense because they have certain fears. I like the Capcan again, sitting up for those passive rushes. Canadian playing in basement. And he said, oh. <laughs> um, the solo, as you said, wasn't the most successful. I would have to agree. But LG want those prep phase drones to be guaranteed going into the building or at the very least stay alive for longer. And the solo span ensures that. Canadian plays the kite instead. He dies early on through the Maverick hole and Darkseer will play a 4v5 this round. Not good when your team leader is the one that's dying early, especially on the Kaid playing downstairs, but maybe he wasn't expecting Wi-Fi to poke some holes and have LG take advantage of that sideline and potentially out of position Kaid of Canadian down there. We will now spectate the operator he played the previous round, which was Capkin. <laughs> and JR post up close to the window in games as there goes that back bar wall. It's a very common spot to Maverick, by the way. You get in, you cut out the bottom of it so that anybody who plays in lobby or even plays down below can easily see your feet. Maybe not lobby, but at least the stairs. Thank you very much, easy. It basically You're means right. you can't play back bar with the relative safety that you expect to. I mean, if they clear NGR, they can plant. Like, default, just jump in the big windows. That's the big thing again. The, the anchor play from NGR saved DC last time. It has to save them now as well. The other player positions are not very strong to help him. So it really comes down to what can LG do here? Flash is going in. Tackle NJR, vault in. Why not? Eddie looking for that pick, but... This is stuck. NJR still there. There's no follow-up from LG onto the feet. Kick throw, jumps into the fray. Down goes NJR, and Eddie will have a safe plant as Bolo walks in, kills Eddie. Diffuser does actually not go down. It was so, so oh. close. But Luminosity's guns will find their marks as DZ looks for a retake. Nave three kills, zero deaths. Make that three kills, one death. Hat finishing that round. Tying things up, one to one. Sometimes simple is good, and that was a pretty straightforward simple attack around 4LG. And I do think that them getting the early kill to Canadian does play a big factor in that. DC had less map control, less map presence, and of course, often when teams lose a player early, they're gonna play a little bit further back and not try and risk losing another member. Because playing 3v5 is like this doomsday, basically. But yeah, it's a very simple strat where you go basement, you marry the bottom line, then you get stock control, then you go side window and library balcony, and you can just jump into side. It's that simple. The only obstacle was NGR. He was forced back by the flashbang to plant out of stock, and then we saw those Maverick holes come into play. He got shot from the basement staircase. They jump in, they plant, they trade with Bolo, whatever. But the plant goes down eventually. The round is successful. And I will say, LG, despite not working the first time, they tried again. Not as full commitment to like the sense and the glass and those kinds of operators, but still that like, okay, let's just hit the side directly and not have to worry about the roam clear. Because it is hard to roam clear a Dark Zero team who's literally playing every floor and pretty much every single room across the map. Earlier, last round, Canadian died, and you just mentioned how like it's not giving you a captain and leader dies, etc. You can actually make the argument that it's it's the best case outcome that your captain dies, right? Because at least it's a useful person in the sense of leadership. And it's, I, I believe that's why Troy plays those kind of front forward roles. A lot of IGLs and, and you know leaders they will play. You know, the anchor position defense, playing on the bomb side. They'll play a hard reach on attack, droning the entire round. Canadian likes to play in the battle. You know, roaming with poles, Valkyrie, Solas, whatever. And if he dies early, he can still have a lot of impact in the round by having full overview, watching all the cameras, all the other four player perspectives, and making the calls happen there. So when people, they look at this host and go, why is Nafe not playing this operator? Why is Indiana not playing this operator? Why is Troy playing these fun operators? That's often why, at least last time I spoke to Troy, that was the case. And I, I'm not sure if this is if this is public knowledge, but eh, I don't really care. I talked <laughs> to Troy shortly before SI, and one of the reasons why Nafe was picked up was so that they could both call different parts of the match. 
Mm. Nave was, as far as I can remember, was the defense IGL, and Canadian would be calling most of the time on attack. Maybe that's okay. swapped. Maybe it's changed. I'm not entirely sure, but, I mean, a big part of why you brought a player like Nafe over is because he can give you that vantage point that Troy doesn't have on his own. Wi-Fi dies, and Kicks Row is going to sprint into action. He sees the Maestro flashed out. NJR dies, and now Kicks Row over towards Connector as LG have found two very fast kills. Dark Zero just continues to reduce those numbers. Just distill them down until Kicks Row's last in the bomb site. The Fuser within arm's reach, but that's not the focus for Kicks Row at this point. The focus. Determine where these last players are before you go about the objective or getting kills because the problem is what a shot oh. by Kicks Row that you don't think you can plant until you have that information. LG struggled in the first round. Now DZ will scramble as they are desperate to get a line of sight onto the ace. Diffuser down, Kicks Row with three kills to his name. I don't know if that cam can see him or not. He's got the sidearm out. Why the sidearm? Why not just reload? There's a go out from above. Nafe dies. Kickstrap might be able to pull this off, right? Canadian walking over, but the old oh. man can still shoot. You can see the look <laughs> on Troy's face that it does not come easy. LG close, but just a little bit too far. DZ win the round. Was that a Troy 1v1 clutch into an immediate face palm? That's what it looked like. And I mean, this also goes to like how much of a veteran Troy is. Like, that's a round win, that's a round clutch, but it shouldn't have been that close. That should have been like a staple save, like 3v1, crossfire, a trade, whatever. It comes down to a 1v1 post plan that is very messy from Dark Zero. And it's those kinds of things that we don't expect from them. We would expect LG to have those kind of like small issues like communication or teamwork or synergy. DC went to Invitationals, picking up Bolo and Nave. They looked phenomenal. They play NAL a couple weeks after SI, and they have not looked like that same kind of team. They've kind of fallen short of expectations. Now, playing a LAN, different vibe. You know, some players, some teams, they just really show up on LAN. It's a whole different experience. But, Arxir, with that being said, I feel like we can expect more from them, realistically, because they are a good team, they do have a good roster, and they've already proved it. So these rounds being as close as they are, and the way that they're winning, and the way they're losing these rounds, it's not really a uh, confidence-inspiring look for DC at the moment, but I will say for LG, they're doing a great job at fighting it back every single round. Last round, basement, they go for a quick, snappy execute. They know what they gotta do and get done. Flashbang, sprint deep, get the kills. It gets messy, but they show they know what it takes to problem solve the round that otherwise look very difficult. Memory serves me correctly, by the way. We saw some big value from the Brava in the previous round. They grabbed the evil eye cam that was inside the site that was instrumental in allowing them mm. to find Nafe. That was the, yeah. the Goyo, if I remember correctly, playing on the table by Hatch inside of dining. Yeah. You look up the lineup from Dark Zero, there's plenty Ooh. that you can grab with that Kludge drone. You just got to make sure the, club dr the Kludge drone actually survives. Xro still has one remaining and will go on to it to try to gain some more intel, but just managed to get away at the feet of NJR, who's now taking some serious damage. Multiple players from DZ looking at Wi-Fi oh. outside, and it'll be Pamzu to go for the jump out as Troy Canadian had grabbed his attention over by Library. Smokes and fire will go as Silent seeks an opening against Dark Zero. He manages to avoid the flames for the time being, but LG only have two drones remaining. Even with the Solus ban, that mute of Bolo providing so much value to DZ, denying LG tons of information. A nice wow. read by Silent, but Naif just outduels him in that regard. X Row and Eddie is the last two for LG. Everybody from DZ still alive. Damn. They tried to hit the sides last time, they got shut down. Now they're trying to go for the room clear up above, they got shut down again. And then Discipline, DC, locked and loaded. Nave is baiting for Bolo, who's close left of this wall. The second, the, yep, there it is. Oh, Bolo just swings. Triple man crossfire. Full discipline, full control for Dark Zero. Amazon needs to be retrieved. He's bleeding out. Very few flawless rounds so far in today's set of matches, but DZ are poised for one, and they'll get Ouch. it.
Ambazu, whether he was picked up or whether he just simply survived based on the timer, DZ. Out to an early lead. That is such a strong bomb set for DC, though they play it, honestly. And uh, LG a bit behind. They're gonna call their technical timeout? Question mark? Yep. I so believe so. They can't go down anymore, right? Just forget about that. They're gonna go uh, probably bar here now. They're probably gonna go back to the default where they just did a ward on Sapphire. Um, let's just do our, you know, our clear where we take off a side. Let's make sure we're hot roading George over there and then so we can, you know, set up for execute phase. Um, I think that's what we should do if they uh, go to their uh, bar defense, which they probably will. Um, for basement, if they do like that, you know, elbow extension, we were talking about, you know, doing a solar over take. So if we take the solar over take, you know, let's actually make sure we're setting up flanks above there and let's make sure that, you know, we are in position to cut this guy off on the uh, hatch before he leaves, right? Um, and if they don't do that, it's fine. We can still do our, our back push because we'll have ha uh, hatch control, which will set up. We'll be in a position to do our, you know, default plan, stuff like that. Okay. So that was obviously very strat specific, but in a way that I, I would say it presented options more so than like a hard deadline. It wasn't guys go for this, guys go for that. It's like, guys, remember we can do this. I want to see a guy go into this position and then we also can have this option as well. And I like that because you're giving your players freedom to make their own decisions. And it's more of like a reminder of either what you've prepared, what you've practiced, or what you're not doing that you should be doing. But it doesn't feel like you're being forced into it. It allows that creative freedom and player control, which I think sometimes can be either over or underlooked by some supportive staff. And despite LG, you know, being down only two rounds, one to three, I don't think it's in the world for them. And the players obviously having some nice decisions in all these rounds with small things going the wrong way. So I'm pretty happy with what I heard. Five seconds to go. It's been really fascinating getting these listen-ins, and I know that Brazil does listen-ins as well. I, As much as the timeouts are intriguing to me, I actually like the listen-ins we've done when the executes have been happening. The cut and thrust to me is what I find more fascinating because I can imagine what strategizing sounds like when there's a timeout, but getting to hear how players articulate the next steps for their strategy is something that you just, you can't really replicate outside of hearing it yourself, right? People that, that yeah. watch this eSport that don't compete or haven't competed at this top level just frankly don't know what it sounds like. And it's a really good window into how teams go about tackling the problems or maybe not even a problem. Maybe they're doing quite well in the round and it's just about next steps. And every team handles it differently. Some comms are quite crowded, some are frantic, some are quite relaxed, some are stressful. It's a nice, as you could say, a nice cross section. And I'm sure we will get a mid round listen in between these two teams before the matchup ends. Certainly. That will be the goal. This round has been relatively slow, but in a good way. It's the kind of slow round where you're progressing as an attacker, defenders are responding, you know, killing drones, falling back, killing drones, falling back, and everyone, like both teams, are kind of getting what they want out of this. DC are playing utility, right? They got the kite claw, the runicates, etc. They're trying to stall for time. But LG all saying, we are okay with that. We have Capitao, Twitch, Flores, and Bravo. They have a lot of drone intensive operators. They're happy to play a slow round. They have a minute and 20 seconds. They're in library. Got a good yellow ping read there. Does a bit of damage onto NGR, but they need to deal with the kite claws. This is where Bravo and Twitch comes into play. But as far as I can tell, they don't have either of those drones available. So Eddie on the Flores might need to be the hero now. If they don't get the kite claws, the Hedges library will not get opened up. LG gets a kill instead. That's also good, but kick server is just inside the bomb site. It's been something that LG's had no problem with so far, Nick, is getting into the site, but what they yep. do with it is the greater problem, and Kixro has been spotted out. He's losing the rest of his team. There's a team kill, in fact. Oh, it's the last one standing. Near-sighted and running desperately towards the Aruni, but it's NJR to finish it, and I don't know if that was frustration from Silent or not, but even after the timeout, DZ right now in the driver's seat of our final match of the day. It's all about the anchor play. Like the, the anchors off Dark Zero, which has been MGR most rounds and sometimes Nave, they've just been so stable. And Justin and Desk spoke about it saying, we want to see more consistency from NGR. And even though NGR is having a great time right now against LG, it's about consistency. It's not about if it does well this game or poorly this game. 
It's about how often he can do well. But for this particular matchup, NGR has been the player in my eyes to secure the majority of the rounds. The fact that he doesn't die early on the side and something happens around him usually is a really good sign that things are going well for Dark Zero. And funny enough, the one round loss for DC was the round where NGR died very easily. That was that bar defense earlier on when he was playing Capcan. He died from the Mavericles, leading from the basement into bar. So very, very big, like kind of uh, things to consider there. If NGR dies, bombs are likely false. If he stays alive or gets traded, Bombsat stays alive. Attacker's objective is to locate a Well, Dark Zero taking a commanding lead so far, up four to one. Reloading. There's nothing even really noticeably wrong about Luminosity. I mean, what is this? Three of the five rounds so far, Nick, Luminosity have been in the site very quickly. But the question is, is what do they do with it? Because it seems like it's always one or two individuals from LG who manage to get in there and not the rest of the team. And, and honestly, that's that's to be expected. It's unusual for a full team to be in the bomb site, and it's often actually quite bad for that to be the case. Hold on a sec. Is this... Did that manage to ice the wall? Oh, yeah. It, uh, it goes through the walls, baby, through the floor. So they can basically kite claw the bottom. They can they can like canister the top, and they can actively trick the wall of freezing it if that's what they're going to do. I know for the kite claws and the top. So, so is the canisters. It doesn't work in this case. It's a trade upstairs. Injure for a kill, however. Well, as we see Kicks Row being picked back up, we do indeed get a listening into the action. Blue tag, blue tag. Right, I'm blue, I'm blue There's a big on me. Fine, fine, fine. I got you. Okay. One down. Blue tag, blue tag. 50. I'm on blue flank. 75. I'm blue flank. 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 I'm blue <laughs> this is this is all your fault, by the way. This is Nick all my is, fault. Nick, Nick and Nick and the production team have been going back and forth over when to call these listenings. And Nick has been predicting at the start of the round when he thinks executes will be coming in. And he said that he thought around maybe 145 ish would be the time. And he was unfortunately off by about 10 seconds. Nick, anything to say to your haters? You know. Sometimes it'd be like that. I am not the GOAT. I never was. I never will be. But I was close, okay? And that matters because I'm trying to guess when they're going to do stuff before the round even starts. And I was only off by 10 seconds. I think that's a small victory, actually. But unfortunately, we didn't hear the setup for that round. That's what I want to hear. That's why I try and aim for those kinds of timings. We want to see shortly before they execute how they're talking, communicating, and how they're setting it up. Then we get to see the execute itself, and then we see the payoff. In that particular instance, I was off by 10 seconds, or we were off by 10 seconds. They were basically in the killing and in the planting when it occurred. But it's one of those small things. We're testing. We're trying to figure it out. We cannot predict the flow of the game. But what I did take away from that was that LG are having a lot of fun, despite being down in, in, in round score. They were saying, hey, give me the kill. Hey, you know, you got this. Go swing this guy, whatever. So their spirits are still high. I don't know that's because they think they're going to do better on defense, perhaps, or whatever it is. But it sounded good from LG, and again, it's important to have fun. Just an interesting listen as well as how different those comms were. I, obviously, I don't want to throw shade Luminosity's way, but from all oh. the listens we've had so far, they did seem like probably the least structured calls of the teams. And I mean, even the positioning uh, where Bola was when he dropped, the calls were he's one HP, oh, he dropped sight. <laughs> Still, I mean, it directly resulted in Bolo getting at least one pick, and then there was the ego call of, I'd like to get him. <laughs> to put into perspective, maybe we can try to catch LG in another round, though they will be on defense for the remainder of this matchup. First half, Dark Zero winning in most of the categories and looking like the better team so far. The scoreline does not tell you a different story. The thing is, if you know Dark Seer, you know their, their defenses are pretty good usually. The big question mark is how they're going to do an attack. 
When they put Earth today on Skyscraper, it was not necessarily a pretty look when they're on the attack inside of things. And Chalet is very different than most of the maps. And it's one of those, okay, it has actually been a tanker favorite for a very long time, only going back, you know, six to eight months, for example. This is a map where if you're good at attacking, you can win a lot of rounds. But DC, they've been very slow. In this opening attack around, they're also relatively slow. They rappel in, they don't drone hats somehow, they have no idea that he's on the staircase. That's the first point of contact. <laughs> JR wins the duel, though it is just based off of his own abilities. He's got the read on one in closet as well. He's okay, okay. slaughtering. Five rounds, they are storming their way towards a victory over what might be a tired LG team from their matchup earlier today. <gasps> a smile. Emotion from Dark Zero. That's it. They're going to win both upcoming rounds and take it 7-1. It's confirmed. Or 7-2. The man of the hour right there for LG. At Protect your bombs from being Highest expectations of any of the players on Luminosity before today's matchup began and before most matchups start. I mean, the desk likes to talk about Hat's potential contributions. Four and six is significantly better than the what one and six he was at one point earlier today. But Luminosity have not solely relied on him. Six row topping the charts at eight and five. He's only one kill behind Bolo for most kills so far in this matchup, but I mean, eight and five doesn't really matter if you're losing, and Luminosity are indeed losing. <laughs> I mean, how, how long have you been doing this for, Parker? Is, is it internet? Is it eight years you've been casting for? Seven? Seven? Seven years? Coming up on my so, seven year casting anniversary. Damn, so seven years, and you you can now tell that LG are indeed losing rounds. Mm. That's good. Experience really is important in this industry. I understand that you need to get back at me for the comment I made earlier today when you said that <laughs> when when East Coast was up 4 nothing, and you're like, Sonics really needs they a round. They gotta win rounds. That's, that's an expert, that's expert analysis right there, you know? That's like, that's like when people say, like, well, how did you win today? And it's like, well, we got more rounds than them. It's like, okay. Well, we play better, simply. I see we are I see we are answering the question at a very surface level and then bothering to go deep at all. No, it's uh, it's the fifth game. It's getting late. You know, we, we gotta simplify it so our brains can keep up. That's how I well, see let it. Me, allow me to expand on my point then, since it seems like we have some time at the moment. Okay. That most players are going to be happy that they did well, but at the end of the day, mm. the goal is for your team to win. So Kicks Row going eight and five, sure, that'll be a point of pride for him, but if it results in luminosity getting beaten quite handily, then yeah. do you really have much to be proud of? In this particular round, Hicks Row eliminates Canadian. I'm not sure what the Grim was doing. It just looks like it was a regular interaction over by Trench Door as the Federer oh. of Kicks Row is buried down in blue. NJR's not expecting another. Good news, he's got backup, and Eddie is isolated by Nafe as both players from DZ work together to give DZ that numbers advantage. Hat is also guarding near the bottom floor, but Sitting in barbed wire by main lobby. You need mm. a big round from Hat now. As both Eddie and Kicks Row are gone, Eddie has been relatively ineffective so far in both utility and in killing. So maybe not all hope is lost so far for Luminosity. A rough game for Eddie, but we've seen Eddie play before at this level. We know that he is capable of more than just a single kill. Final moment of action. Dark Zero holding the advantage, though they have taken their lumps. NJR and Nafe hurt. Nafe in particular badly hurt. But full utility for the Capitao. Most damning I prospect here, though, is that it's Nafe holding on to that case. It might be a moot point if DZ just kills everybody as Wi Fi dies and it's silent and hat as the last two players from LG. It's dangerous. The heal of that library of Pelican, gonna pivot and go somewhere else instead of suppose window jump in. Risky. Is that. Vault prompt, it's not pretty. Fire goes out, that might play in a factor, but no, Hat stays alive. He finds that perfect pixel spot. He's, or so he thought. Or so he thought. Able to dodge the fire, but you can't dodge the bullets. NJR and Pambazoo, sensational when working together. Look at that. The energy level of Pambazoo, the enthusiasm, <laughs> the eagerness. I know that you have to cycle through all these players, but can we just. Just for old time's sakes, can we go back to Pamazoo, please? 
Look <laughs> at that energy level. He is bringing the vibes to his team. Oh, these player camps today. It's once a match. And again, it's usually the pop-off, but in that round, it was NGR. He has found his moment in so many rounds now, both on the defense and the attack now. 11 kills to his name, and it's always awkward with NGR because he's like your quote-unquote support player. Plays a lot of thermite, plays a lot of smoke and stuff. Mute. But NGR is such a phenomenal player at finding kills and just being very staple in gunfights, at least like historically the last many years. And sometimes I always wonder, what if you put that man on like, like a more entry-oriented role? Or like, or like second entry, right? Get this man in a building with a good gun. I, I'm telling you, NGR would get good kills. Last round, DC, they did a great mini execute in the basement where they got two kills off blue. They swung in from the primary garage of Snowmobile, got a kill. Nave was then on the fire from the frost that was put on blue staircase. Nave didn't swing. But the two other players from Dark Zero swung the other angle inside of Blue instead and got a two for one freebie essentially. Wi Fi and LG try and go for a cheeky spawn peak. Why not when you're down facing match point? Try and get that early kill, build that early lead. It doesn't pay off. It's a shoulder shot onto Bolo, who's going to suffer a little bit of damage, but ultimately it's not going to matter at all. That one bullet will not make a big difference, most likely in this round. Do or die for Luminosity for the remainder of this second half and the remainder of regulation. Luminosity will need to win four rounds in a row for overtime to be their successful way out of this match. Three points will be in hand for Dark Zero if they prevail anytime between now and that 13th round. And it's the one thing that Dark Zero has not been able to do so far this stage, which is win a game in regulation. In fact, Dark Zero has only been able to win a single game period so far through the four matches they've played. This is match number five. DZ won it in overtime. They lost in overtime as well, so DZ has some points, but the success they had at SI and with the history behind not just this roster, but also this organization, you have to imagine that they are well below their own expectations, and I'm not really certain what Luminosity was thinking there. But well, Wi-Fi and Eddie are dead, Ooh. Kicks Row is gone. There's a Nitro Cell from Hat tossed well. It's now silent, antagonized on these trophy stairs. Hat will join him for backup, and another Nitro Cell will be pulled out of the pockets of Luminosity. Will it have the same level of success as the first? No. Dave holds that angle. A swing in from DZ would be enough to topple that defender playing by trophy. If you're a fan of LG, you are hoping that Silent wins that duel. You hope that he woke up this morning and he said his prayers, took his vitamins, and ate his Wheaties, but... For the moment, the waiting game. Final moment now as the fire rages not far removed from Silent. Hat, the only one sitting inside of the bomb site, to defend against DZ. It's smart. DZ have two players locking down one, and they can isolate Hat and step on the side, but he finds the... No, not an injury. It's a drop shot, actually. He goes down. Just leaving Silent at 1v4. Uh, might as well be playing another map at this point because he's lost control of the bomb site and lost control of his life. That was a quick one. Dark Zero giving us one of our fastest days in the NAL so far this stage. And they pick up three desperately needed points. If you want to hang with the big dogs, you got to beat the big dogs. And while LG might not be that, DZ in eighth place to start this match will vault all the way up to fifth, leapfrogging Luminosity in the process. This is going to be an absolute dogfight for the Manchester Major, whether it comes down to points or even the last chance qualifiers. But DZ get the job done today. It didn't look like they broke much of a sweat doing it, Nick. Not this time around. And I mean, that's I think that's the more important story for Dark Series that they had a really sloppy game earlier on where it looked like they could not really attack and the defenses were, they were okay, but you know, not like anything to write home about. And then they go to Chalet and they can actually defend really well and they can also attack. So a much better look, they can turn things around between those two games. You know, I might've done something that was a bit ill-advised, but after our matchups finished, I went over to Reddit and I was reading some of the Reddit comments on the game threads. And one of the main things that people kept saying about Dark Zero was, please for the love of God, stop going to Skyscraper. And while they listened to you, Reddit, and you did it. Wow. The reason why Dark Zero won today was because Redditors told them not to go to Skyscraper. So 
That's, that's, that's incredible. Just a bit of applause for you there. That's it for all of our matchups today, but we've still got the post show and we'll hear from Dark Zero in their winner's interview, but not before we go to a break. We'll be right back. Dark Zero managed to avoid disaster. Luminosity are the pure, pure face of that disaster. We are done with day five of the NAL as it stands. And for LG, it's a day they would much rather forget about as soon as they possibly can. But that's just what happens when you play double headers in the NAL. It's not something that anybody expected to walk into when this season started, but because we had reschedules, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. So for DZ, good job. For LG, come back tomorrow, boys. I mean, that's all you can do. You gotta wipe it off. It wasn't it wasn't your day, but that's what the next day is for. You can get back up on that saddle, have the performance you need, learn from. I mean, unfortunately for LG, you do lose, but you have to take from these losses, and that's the most important thing, especially bringing a brand new team, is that you truly take from these losses and learn from them, so that way you can improve, because it's really the only way you're going to improve as a team. Certainly, and I mean, whilst they're not in a great spot in the standings, they are, you know, not out of it yet. Mm. There are more weeks to play. They'll be back tomorrow for sure, and so, yeah, I, I want to see those improvements coming through from LG. Um, they've still got time. Actually, they won't be back tomorrow. I just did a double check. They're currently not listed on the roster for the games that we have to play um, tomorrow. Know, one in nine. And that's, odds that's, that's, that's yeah. Yeah, that's not true. even bad either. That gives them more time to really dig true. deep, find out what the problems were, fix it going. When they have the to come back time. to the Super Week, they, yes, have they do have more to come time back for the Super Week, but it yeah. does allow them a little more time to get their bearings and figure out what they need to figure out. Well, for DZ, good job. You got to win on the day. It came at the very end, but at least it happened. You walk away with three points for your efforts, and it now shoves them way back up in the standings. Mm. Unlike I picked Laxing. Wait, yeah, why does I it say Jesse picked LG? Hey, Jesse I picked hey, pound LG. that. I respect that. I, I respect that. Pound that. Pound that with me. Don't fist bump him. You didn't pick it, Jesse. Don't fist bump him. Honestly, gaslit. I was being a little silly, quirky guy. There we go. Yeah, I was being a little silly, quirky guy. You know, it's DZ's favorite map, but I figured, you know, it's LG. There are things that can happen in this league. We've seen it more than enough, and well, you know. Parker agreed with us. He's like, we have. Well, I have no idea the way that this match is going to swing, and uh, I, I don't think it was that dumb to pick LG, yeah. given the way we saw DZ play. They just woke up in the second half of this game. Was it just Chalet all along? Laxing, I just think, is chief uh, bolo hater, is, is my theory on this. Facts. Facts. Lost to him so much back in the day, you're like, never again. Oh, well, hold on. Actually... So I think Dark Zero in this game really did play well. This Glad we saw NJR starting to come back a little bit. Um, this clutch from, uh, from kicks. Questionable. Oh, we didn't, they didn't even show it. it. No, the, <laughs> Good job. It was so questionable, production was like, nah. He went for a swing with the pistol there on Troy Canadian. It did not go so well for him. But all in all, I mean, I think overall this was a bad map choice to start off with for, for LG. I mean, again, we don't really know what LG's map pool looks like, but we know this is a really strong map for Dark Zero. Despite it's, despite the fact they haven't played it since SI, still the fundamentals are going to be there. It's the same five-man roster, so I think that that's going to be relatively clear. I think a lot of times, especially in that first half, we saw LG maybe not getting the proper control around the bomb site before going for the execute, or if they did get that control, they weren't able to utilize it properly. Maybe the hatches stayed closed. Maybe they had some other utility issues. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of problems, I think, through that game from, uh, from Luminosity. They should be able to go back and fix some of those. A problem that didn't exist for Dark Zero is a guy that we talked about in the pregame that we were wondering when he was going to finally wake up, NJR, for his own Part actually had a pretty decent game here. No, NJR was playing exactly how you'd want NJR to be playing. I, this was a clip where I kept saying, what, what, what? <laughs> because there were so many different instances that LG shouldn't have lost, but DZ kept capitalizing on it, specifically off NJR's backing. But no, NJR is performing well and where we want him to be performing because Fox, what he does is he talks about highlighted players and they end up performing horribly. <laughs> I talk about these highlighted per performers and they actually start to performing. So NJR, you're welcome. I'm glad I could do you guys a service, DZ specifically. But no, it's important, again, and then, and then maybe that's why we saw the 7-2. I don't want to entirely put that on NJR's back, but it is still good to see him performing once again and where we want to be seeing him on that leaderboard. Well, let's get Nafe on the horn to talk about how this game went down, brother. It's uh, We haven't had the chance to talk in an interview at any point, really. So first of all, hi, I'm Jacob. I hope you, I'm, uh, you, you had a dub. Congratulations for you, man. Just out of curiosity, you. what did you do from the game earlier in the day to now to try to figure <laughs> out what that loss was like and then wipe the whole thing away and come into this LG game fresh. What did you do in the break? Um, well, obviously, we knew coming into the day we were going to be playing two games. So no matter what the first result was, we were going to, we were going to reset. Uh, the first game, I mean, obviously, different map, Skyscraper, heavily defender sided. Um, I think our issues kind of, it wouldn't have translated into Chalet. 
like I think we we struggled with like the info the on attack especially early round uh, and like shallow you can play like loads of different tempos mm -hmm. like slow quick it's easy to get into on that map so I think like yeah like we we played a more comfort map for us I would say uh, I don't know they let us play chalet so yeah we we play chalet. Well, it was a swift win. It was a 7-2. A question for you. So the success from SI that you guys had off the start right away, it doesn't look like that's transitioning as fast going into this stage. What's the biggest issue, in your opinion, or the biggest hurdle you guys are facing right now? That is the question we're trying to figure out, too. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously, we're not performing to the level we performed at SI. That's obviously a no-brainer. Um, Obviously, we're still putting the work in day in, day out. Scrims have been going well. I mean, I don't know. I think we just need to figure out. A, 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 maybe it's a confidence issue. Maybe mm. it's like just like a prep issue. I mean, we're putting in the work, so I, I don't really know. Because like some days, like I don't know, Sky felt great for us, and it didn't yeah. translate to the official. But I mean, it might be one of them days. You know, we lost two one VXs on the attack with, with the bomb down. So we win them. It might be a different game. Who knows? I don't for know. Sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, Naif, I want to talk to you a little bit about kind of Dark Zero as a whole. You know, I know a lot of the Europeans that I talk to sometimes criticize Dark Zero's overarching playstyle for being kind of slow, kind of traditional. Um, for yourself, being a European who has now joined the DZ system, what are your thoughts on the overall philosophy that Dark Zero tends to play with? Do you think it's something that you have a mission to somewhat change or modify to the new age? Or are you trying to really adapt and roll into what DZ like to be working with? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think uh, one of the first things I mentioned when I first joined was like the overall like view on them was like they play slow, they play snail, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Um, but a lot of the things they do, I agree with. You know, there's a lot of structure to it. A lot of like, um, if this happens, we do like we have a lot of like solutions for a lot of stuff, which I, I agree with. But I'm not here to change the play style. I'm not here to like change. I'm I'm just here to add. And I mean, mm -hmm. I like when it comes down to play style, I think I can add some quick stuff. Mm -hmm. I can help with the strategy side of things. I think, yeah. So I'm, I'm not trying to change anything. I think like there's definitely some things we obviously we can improve on, which you, which you clearly see. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think like I think a good mixture of both uh, is what we're aiming for. Yeah, fair enough. Well, congratulations on getting the dub in this one, man. Even though it took until the very end of the day, it's always good to escape with a couple more points. Congrats on the win. Go back in the lab. We'll see you for your game against the Beast Coast tomorrow, right, dude? Yep. See you then. Beast Coast are certainly going to have an interesting game on their hands for that one, just because we've seen the way that DZ play. They actually get their first dub. That the Beast Coast go on the lab and figure out exactly what they have to do. Somehow that game actually doesn't. That, that looks pretty good on paper for tomorrow if that ends up playing out the way I think it will. Yeah, I'm excited for that one because I feel like week one we saw a Beast Coast who wasn't really ready. And then today we saw a team that wasn't really ready to play Beast Coast because they didn't expect Beast Coast to make all those changes and to be uh, the better team that they were. So now tomorrow we're finally going to have Beast Coast are playing a better style of Siege. Uh, their opponents are going to be able to see kind of, okay, what type of Beast Coast are we playing? They've now got at least a, a new map to take back and, and to watch from them. So it should be an overall higher level game. Um, coming into that one, just because there's more information. Yeah. I mean, it's just better to see all these teams in the whether in the lower bracket, middle of the pack, whatever, is that every team looks like they're improving as these games are going on, which that's something that you would want to be seeing anyways. You don't want to see someone just declining with every single day by any means. No, but, you know, Lowe's, Beast Coast, all these teams, Luminox, like everyone is still performing. They're still learning what they need to learn to improve. And it just makes watching Siege a lot more enjoyable to see these teams really putting in the effort and putting in the work to make these games as, as close in comparison to one another as they possibly can be. Well, that's all that we've got for day five of the NAL. The, the stage is set now for the post show at this point. That's where we, we I mean, we don't dim the lights, even though that, that would kind of be cool. But we, we kick back, we let Twitch subscriber only mode on for a little while so that you guys can ask us questions. And we'll do a little bit of a full day roundup in that setting as well. So make sure that if you have a subscription active, get a couple of questions in chat so that we have the chance to answer them on screen. And we'll be back in a couple minutes after we get a little bit more comfortable on stage. So we'll see you in a sec. The games are done, the servers are closed, the observers have turned their PCs off and gone to bed, but we're still here because this is the NAL post show. Day five is done and dusted. We have a few thoughts left on exactly how the day went and we just decided why not do it with a little lounge music in the background because this is what the higher ups have suggested that we do for a post show, which is fun, which I honestly don't really have a problem with. I'm Jacob, he's Laxing, he's Jesse. Hi, how's it going? This, uh, is, this is brand new to me. You haven't done this before? No. Because you weren't here for, you were here for the first week. Mm. But for the second week, that's where we actually started doing the thing. So just, 
turn turn presenter mode off and just just be real, dude. Oh, all right. Well, I'm going home. Okay, bye. <laughs> See you, bro. Uh, so what? We just we're chilling. We're, we're just chilling, chilling now. Yeah, just hanging out. Sick. No more stats. No more. No more breakdowns. I should have gotten a drink before this started. I for the past couple of days, I like had a mug and was and just like I at least had like a prop in my hand that wasn't an iPad. Oh. So that would have been nice. So I guess I'll just stick for having a pen in my hand because why not? Fair well, play. I mean, I've kind of accepted already. Like I'm just not getting this belt. Like, oh no, you've you already given up. Throwing. Yeah, I'm I can't giving lie. up. Yeah. Oh, you were man. only one behind me before you. Well, then I LG. went. Well, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I figured I'd do something a little you fun, silly, like quirky. A sloth. It's such, it's such a cool belt too. You're you're already giving up on it, man. Come nah, on. I won't give up on it yet. But give after, up on her. She after, wants after, after that play on chalet, that last game. Yeah. <laughs> what, was it NJR swinging in or was it Bolo? Uh, NJR swung in through solar, beat the guy on stairs, and then got the two K off. Yeah, that was. I, I'm <laughs> telling you guys, chat. Like, if you could have been in the back room. I watched this entire thing and I was just what? You're just what? Groaning the <laughs> what? whole time. Yeah. And NJR literally killed everyone and like realistically, you should never be able to swing into uh, solar stairs in any situation when someone's playing the stairs. And DZ didn't even know no. I think Silent was playing there to yeah. begin with. And the fact that DZ swung in, lost the initial engagement, and NJR is just like, all right, I'm gonna go too. I'm just <laughs> and chilling. then kills three people off it is uh, insane to me. So Well let, let's take a look at what the whole day looked like from top to bottom, just to get a picture for those of you who may have joined the stream late. Los opened us up and got a dub. They are no longer winless. Later in the day, Beast Coast got a dub over Sonics. They are no longer winless. Space Station are no longer undefeated, but OX XGR. It was a tough game or a tough day to predict. Like you not only had to predict that the 0-3 lows would beat the 3 and 0 space station, mm -hmm. you also had to predict that Beast Coast would get a massive upset over the Sonics. Yeah, over the Sonics. Beast Coast also previously uh zero wins to their name. And then like Luminosity almost came back against uh against Oxygen and got that upset win. Uh is 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 a tough get. Tough I mean, day. the Luminosity Z one was the biggest, you know toss-up for me. It was a question of who's sure, really yeah. going to win, and then... It would have been that or N80DZ yeah, to some level, I feel probably. I like N80DZ was much more... Well, no, for I, more people, no, it was no, more clear cut. No. I think the LGDZ was a pretty hard one to pick. <laughs> per personally. Well... A lot of thought process went into that for me to make that decision. I'm sure it did. I'm sure there's a lot of thoughts that were going into that. Was that 46%? Quickly. Something like that. Close, somewhere around there. We'll have to do a double check on prediction percentage in a second. OXG, only team with double digit points on the day. Wildcard did not play today, so the fact that they're down in ninth place looks considerably worse than it is. Um, but as the schedule will show later, they will be back to play a double header tomorrow. So maybe don't consider them down and out just yet. Beast Coast got three points, but they're still only in seventh because of the Dark Zero win that put them back up the stand. DZ were as low as eighth with that loss yep. from earlier and everyone else vaulting over them and then they get back up to fifth with that dub. So. I mean, even looking at this though, it's still relatively close. It's One so win, close. three points can set someone all the way into third place at that point or even in second. So it's not to look at this and be like, wow, these teams are really bad or they don't stand a chance. This is all within one game and some teams that have doubles could easily bounce all the way to the top. Yeah, okay, gut check real quick. Three teams that are in the bottom three at the end of this. End of the end of the stage. Who's not making playoffs? You calling it now? Yeah, make your call. This is Ooh. insane. I'll do it. Hey, do it. this won't be a prediction that counts toward the belt. Yeah, of course. So just just, just speak your mind. What do you think? Uh, well, if I, I if I could have saw wild card play Los. today, <laughs> if I could have saw wild card play today, it might make me change my opinion. But because they are where they are, they're down there for sure. Yeah. Uh, if Los can't continue the same performance that we saw from today, they're staying there. Beast Coast, again, like their identity, they looked far better today. So I, I don't want to- just picking the bottom three. Well, I, but I, well, the two of them are definitely, but I can't say Beast Coast right now. Is, so. the, is the more accurate question, the current bottom three, do they stay the bottom three? I think it's a hard no. Hard no? I, I For think, all three of them? Well, no, okay. I well, think, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think two of those three are staying. I think Los gets out though. You think Lowe's gets I, out? I have so much faith in Lowe's, actually. After watching them play the last couple of play days, I, I really like the way Well, you also out. had tons of faith in Beast Coast going into this entire thing. You said this was the best version Beast Coast uh, has ever had. That was before I saw that. And you know what? They look better today. They so, did. Yeah, I'll back that I, up. I, I mean, I'll back I, that up. I agree with I that. I still got faith in Beast Coast. But this Coast. is what I was saying. I think Beast Coast makes it out before the other two. How about this? Uh, you know what? I think Wildcard stays in the bottom three. I think oh. LG falls to the bottom three. And then I think it comes down last second, like, Beast Coast versus Actually, Dark whatever Zero. org doesn't send me merch, <laughs> you're at the bottom. <laughs> Plain and simple. Like that's it's, the final it's, crux. It's, yeah. You can literally buy Laxing's opinion Absolutely. by just sending merch to him. I could throw on one of these jerseys and I said it in a tweet. 
I could look better than your players in it. I could model for you. I could be in the gym for you. I could I could get some likes on it. I could get people, wow, not only do I want to get in the gym, but I want to support one of these teams. We certainly all would love either merch or skin codes or anything. Guys, if you're watching the NEL and you want to send us some stuff, please do that. We will thank you for it publicly, and Laxing will even fully shill for you on, on, the, on the desk. A apparently. Absolutely. He is selling his advertising absolutely. services as we speak. My predictions will fully go in your favor. Let's do a check on the games that we've got going for tomorrow. This is Wild Cards doubleheader. One of those games is for Los. So if Los are a Ribby about to make that climb back up, that's not a terrible opponent for them to start against if Wild Card aren't able to find much momentum or change up their play style too much. Space Station are the other team with a doubleheader, but they have a lot of time between playing M80 as game one, which is already going to be great, and then waiting four hours to play Wild Card at the end of the day. Yeah, I think Game one, M80 Space Station, that looks like a banger game. I'm very excited for that one. That's that's going to go 15 rounds. That's my call. Sure. I mean, I'm even excited for the second game with Los Wildcard. We didn't get to see Wildcard play today. They obviously yeah. had a little more time to find what they needed to find a groove. Los obviously getting their win today against the 3-0 SSG, now making them 3-1. Mm -hmm. So I see that game, and like you were saying, you know, you're, you're, you're excited for them. You think they're making it now, and that will yeah. make that statement push even further if they can get that win. I will look like a clown if they lose to Wildcard, and it's not <laughs> Close, though. I, that'll, that'll look bad. Yeah, that, these, that these will games, suck, so just don't do some that. Some of these games, like even last week with the predictions and everything. Yeah. I, I, I don't think there's been a day tougher than today on everyone's overall predictions, though. I don't know. Last like, week I, like, was pretty I think rough. Fox was at 1.1 1. 1 for 4 and then climbed back out because he picked DZ at the very end. Yeah. So even for him, the guy at the top of the leaderboard right now, like with the highest percentage to win this thing, it was still a tough day for him. So I think today was just the roughest overall. Nice. I'm coming for Fox. I'm one game behind him still. And now, Watch out. Am only I two one games game. behind you now? Because I decided to go with a Ooh. silly, silly LG. Yeah, you're kind of out of it. Uh -huh. right. Let's do some questions from the subscriber chat. What are you excited for as the major approaches? What are you excited for? LAN. LAN, absolutely. Crowds. The, the big thing for me is there's been a tier one LAN in England before now, like like year two or year three year or something. One, I think there was one a really long time ago. So the fact that the the UK what? is actually getting a big land again is a big. Is Where it was like, I? It, no, it was it was one of the Pro League finals like, way back when. In the I don't UK, know. I swear there was one. No, there was one. I'll I look. It was year one PC Pro League. Or something. Are you sure it, would it wasn't like the UK's version of their like? No, no, no it, it, it yeah. wasn't like the Premiership or anything. But it was a legitimate like tier. So it's been years since we've been back. Is more the point. I'll, I'll look it up real quick. And this was during year one. I think so. Year one. Year one or year two? I'll, what are you? What are you guys most excited? For? Yeah, I was gonna say I'll answer. I'm excited to see BDS uh, play against the Brazilian teams. Like uh, NA, I think is kind of gonna. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. But I don't expect be a good representative for the brand, Jesse. Of uh, don't betray of us. Of the major, personally, like the way BDS is playing inside of Europe right now looks scary. So I really want to see them go against like the Titans of Brazil, which are of course the Titans of the world because Brazil's the best region. In the world. Right, right. I mean, like I said it in the beginning of this, just being in that atmosphere, being at the land, seeing the fans and the crowds and all that stuff, that's what's more hype than anything is just being part of that. Whether whether you're an analyst there, whether you're a host there, whether you're just attending there, whether you're a player there, just being in that atmosphere is what makes those events so special. I found that one event, Okay, go. by the way. Year one, season two, finals for both Xbox and PC in Leicester in the UK. This is back in August of 2016. Told you. It's been eight years since a tier one event has been back in the UK. So Manchester finally gets one. I'm excited for the food in the UK. Are you really? <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> Uh, Do list. you think Los thinks NA is easier than Brazil? Well, okay, so Bursa went out of his way on the interview to say that he doesn't think that it's easier, but it's different, like, because stylistically, it's just oh, such, it's, such a it's, weird... Like, it's a culture shock to come to America in the first place. It's a culture shock to play American teams when you're out here, too. Well, it's always, it's always been that way since Siege has ever started their competitive career. It's... NA's had their own play style. EU has played their own play style. E, I mean, uh, Brazil has had their own play style. APEC has had their own play style. As we've seen throughout the years, a lot of teams have kind of like cultivated some of the other regions' play style and adap adopted it into their play style. But overall, yeah. still, every region has their very significant way of how they play Siege. I think undoubtedly like the top of Brazil is better than the top of North America, but for a team like Los, regardless of what region you're playing in, you're not really 
looking to compete against the top of the regions, you're looking to like make it into that top six, maybe top four and like squeak in a major appearance, right? And I think for Los, you're looking at the mid-tiers of NA, the mid-tiers of Brazil, that's where I think it's a lot more comparable. Yeah. And so for Los, it's not necessarily easier playing inside of North America, but it is different. Specifically to Jesse, so neither myself or Laxon can answer this question. How was your break? My break? Like th the last two weeks not being I mean, I can here. That break, I guess, yeah. Yeah, um, it was chill. We've been streaming twitch.tv slash Jesse J Chick. We do a lot of co-streams. We're watching Brazil and Europe this weekend. Hey. Tune in. Um, but no, we've been we've been streaming, we've been making content, playing some GeoGuessr, you know. No, it's been good. I mean, I wanted to be here, frankly. I, I'm sad I missed the first two weeks. But I'm uh sad. Yeah, I'm sad I didn't get to see get to see you guys. Justin Trudeau in person physically would not let him cross the border into America. Wow. Well, we actually found out why you didn't come. You had to get that solo cup. Yeah, I had to. I used some espionage. <laughs> I really hope that 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 whole joke carries on like for longer than just today. Well, like, we'll see. We'll see. We'll be able to get that through customs. Yeah, how did you how did you literally get contaminated evidence from a lab through customs, bro? I don't gotta answer that. <laughs> <laughs> There's still water in it. There's actually nothing in there. He's actually drinking air right now, thinking he's. He's just he's, he's sipping, trying to look cool. I'm actually so thirsty. Oh my goodness. Damn. Re really should have put some. And there's not water. We established it was bowl of fan tears. True. What does it take to qualify as a desk analyst? Uh, not much. Not very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, God. I mean, if if you want a joke answer, just make sure that you're at least bronze two in siege. But what does it take to qualify? Um. Usually you have to fight the previous analysts in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So the reason why you don't see Emzo on desks anymore is because he lost a fight to me way back in 2020, which is why I got the job and then I was on desks forever. So Emzo, if you've ever recovered from that beating, let me know on Twitter. I'll be happy to, uh, to send you a bouquet or something. I don't know. How did I get here? Who did? Yeah, who, who did you beat up? To How get did the you get here? Uh, I don't know. Well, kinda, you kind of just landed here. Yeah. I retired and then. They said, hey, you're getting old. You want to be on the desk? And I said, <laughs> damn. Sure. Why not? What a self reward. Yeah. So this is like a nursing home for me, retirement home. I was, I, a, I was a caster in Challenger League, and then they switched to NAL, and they decided we're going to have analysts for the first time, and they had an open slot. And there were no analysts because that wasn't really a position before they moved to, like, the new FACES system. It was a weird time back it when was weird. T1 didn't prioritize hosts for anything other than events. Same with analysts. Yeah. Like, every time you I saw... I didn't even like, know the difference between all of you when I was playing. Yeah. I mean, back in, back in the no, day, there was fair. no difference because it was just casters. Yeah. No. And they're, and they're just like, wait, we have, we have like, another another caster duo and then somebody who doesn't cast? Like, back then, it was, it was, uh, it was dark times because it was COVID, too, and we were switching over to a different format. Um... Yeah, that was that was way different. Uh, if you want to know what it's like, or like like how to get into being talent, like we all had very different paths to doing it. Like being an ex-pro for most people is not an instant get up, but that's like a really easy way to find your way in because having previous desk knowledge is really good for that stuff. You had been grinding in esports before Siege and then made the challenge really jump. That was just kind of how it went. I was doing content for, for YouTube for a long time, then got to Challenger League, and then that was eventually my way in. So for everybody who is talent, it's a different journey all around. Like, it, it's not, the, there's, it's, no, there's not like a path to pro to be an animal. What I find interesting about being in this job specifically is there's tons of different personality. I mean, you could say that about player to player, but like talent to talent, like now being in this, it, the personalities, I wouldn't say anyone's like necessarily the same. Like everyone has their own very unique Everyone's personality. Totally different. Yeah. But yep. we do the same jobs or like we all do it relatively the same to some degree with our own unique twist on it. Favorite three teams potentially at the major? Well, BDS, that's a given. Um I think it's easy. FaZe, Fury, BDS. I don't that's literally, literally what I was gonna say. I don't think there's another answer, frankly. Is it like a lot of people are saying like foregone conclusion of BDS like major I mean, grand final? Talon. Are we there? <laughs> Talon, Talon will be fun. Talon. Talon will be fun to at least watch, even if they maybe don't progress as far as some people think. Yeah, I mean, that'll be, be good. That'll be interesting, but I they, I mean, they've see, lost. I just want to see Fabian back there. Just behind yeah, them. I mean, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be dope. But I think for top three, I, I think top four is a more interesting question. Like, I, who's the fourth on that list? Ooh. I don't know. But I think top three Oxygen. is like Oxygen. Part <laughs> <laughs> Oxygen. Does anybody, um, yeah, does anybody from NA like slip in there at all? Like, does SSG power through and maybe get. A better result from SI. Not on my list. You can make the argument though. That'd be fun if they did. But mm. yeah. Does Bliss get above top eight? Well, they do get the buy into the second phase. 
because of the new format. If well, if they if, again, you're if, right. If they you're qualify. right. Obviously, they if have they to do that qualify. first. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. What's everyone's favorite team to watch? Mm. Okay, favorite team in this case may not necessarily mean like best team. You know, like we, we were having a lot of fun watching. Um, Oxygen uh, earlier today, even though, yes, currently top of the table, but would they be well, like one of the top teams in the world? That's debatable. Um, I, I've always liked watching Bleed, personally. That, mm. Bleed's a fun team to watch. That, that yeah. one's a highlight for I me. Mean, this, this might be a basic one for me and a lot of people's choice as well, but W7M, well, now Furia. Yeah. yeah. That was definitely one. Like, watching KZ and Herd specifically play, and I've been in Siege for a long time. I've watched a lot of top players play, played against a lot of top players, but watching Herds and KZ play was like, holy, like, yeah, <laughs> these guys are nuts. Yeah. Like, I'm not that confident on some of those pixel peaks that they ended up getting kills from. It was it's truly impressive from those two and yeah. the rest of the guys on the team. No, I, I got to agree. Like, I think watching W7M play is, like, just ridiculous because of how fundamentally good they are at everything, how every player, like, has their own role, their own, like, Play style on the team, but they're all so perfect at it. If I have to give like an, a North American answer, uh, I'd probably say Space Station. Say Space Station. Yeah, because the that, energy that's pretty they bring, like obviously on land, being able to, like I've been in the same room as Ashen as he played many, many times during Atlanta I mean, and during SI, and it's like, oh my god. I also just love the fun. team chemistry that they have. Yeah, the little regiment that they have going on. There's yeah. never been a team dynamic that's even come remotely close to SSG. I would say the closest thing to that and it hasn't been as hectic, is the old Rec roster. That roster, like, to this I, day... Dude, I miss that team I don't, so much, man. I don't man. care what anyone says. That old Rec roster was by far, I think, a lot of people's favorites. Not maybe for placing or anything like that. Not to say that we even placed bad by any means, but just in terms of, like, overall team chemistry and how we all operate around each other, yep. we could have had a reality TV stuff with a <laughs> lot of the things that happened. There is that. not enough footage from the rec house that made it online because there would oh, be, like, 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 the occasional content fees or video that comes out, and I'm like, man, that, that looked like the blast that it seemed behind the scenes. Nah, that, that roster was so much fun. So much fun. Best roster I've ever been a part of. There's, there's, uh, there's one more question, but it's not one that's listed uh, from, from Twitch chat. It was a debate that we had last week. So stupid. No, no, no. It's, it's not the one that we had in the green room. It's one right. from last week. It's pretty simple. Pancakes or waffles go? Pancakes. No, waffles. Waffles Dude, have pancakes. texture to them. Pancakes are I don't just like need a, a texture. A, a mouthful of mush. Pancakes just make me feel vibey comfortable like if i'm having a nice breakfast you get eggs you get some sausage or bacon you slap some hot cakes on there it's solid you get a waffle there like it just ain't the same and then if you want to even eat it like a taco and dip it you just you just grab it you just yeah, and then you got sticky fingers, bro. Why do you keep saying it's sticky fingers? If you were dipping it in syrup, you do not have sticky fingers. If you're dipping like, a are you like, this, like, are you like syrup. Are you like doing this? Like when you like if dip you're dipping your whole hand in, in syrup and then you bite into it, okay. it's dripping well, all over the place. We know Jesse eats like knife. a child. We know you, Jesse eats like no, a child. I use you have cookies and milk. He dips I his use whole utensils. hand. Is that is that done? Uh no, there's a little bit still in there. Do you care? Go for if it. If I demonstrate, because that's just filled. What do you do? It's just, what are you doing it's right just now? plain and simple. If Jesse had a cookie with his thought process of his hands getting sticky, if he had yeah. like a cookie and milk, he'd <laughs> <laughs> and then like shove the cookie in his mouth. Like you're just that, no, that's, that's cup literally of water. No, why are you yes, touching man. your food with your hands to begin with? This is gross, bro. A lot of the you world eat eats waffles. with their hands. Yeah, but not pancakes. Yeah. No. Anyways. Pancakes are just better. They just make you feel more comfortable. They make you no, feel more don't. at home. They make you feel good. A waffle, waffle is just crunchy. kind of They're boring. Good. No. Why do you need crunchy? Go I'm eat really chips if you want that. That Ubisoft gave me a position of power on broadcast so I can just cause havoc like this. But outside of You're wrong. pancakes, <laughs> You're wrong. Outside, you of, outside of pancakes and waffles, French toast beats all of them. French toast is. We can all agree French on toast that. French toast is, is, is pretty, is Listen, pretty limitless. We can butt yeah. heads on the pancakes and the waffles, but French toast will demolish any of those any day of the week. Put her there. Oh, no, dap me up, dap me up. And with that, we are done with day five. Sorry to, to production for the camera angle change. We're done with day five. Thank you very much for joining us on the broadcast. Always a pleasure, by the way, to finally have Jesse J. Chick no, back where he belongs on the desk. Waxing shut you off. Saying this ain't even a day. It's the, the end of the day. We're getting out of here. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. We'll be back same time, same place, 5 p.m. Eastern tomorrow for day number six. Hope to see you there. In the meantime, have a good night.